When deciding what is worth developing in terms of professional skills, there is an important concept that I would like to talk about we would call the half-life of skills. My name is David Orban and this is The Context. I'm often asked uh, for advice. Uh, what are the areas of technology, for example, uh, where a certain person should invest in developing new skills? And I am always very happy uh, to provide my feedback. The opportunity is available for all of us to improve ourselves. Of course, this is true both uh, in the personal sphere as in the professional sphere, but I will concentrate on the second one today. Also, um, the questions come from uh, people of all ages, and this is very appropriate. Rather than being set in a given type of career, uh, even those uh, who are not very young anymore, who are not at the beginning of uh, their uh, professional trajectory, can and should invest uh, in themselves in order to maintain and improve uh, their ability to provide value uh, to uh, the businesses that they work together with. This is especially important in terms of what I call the half-life of skills. What do I mean? Well, uh, any time we decide to invest our attention, uh, our resources, our time in a given direction, we have to take into account the opportunity costs that arise. Unavoidably, the decision of going in one direction will imply that we do not go in another direction, or as a matter of fact, a very large number of possible alternative directions. So the decision has certain costs associated with it, both in terms of time, resources, attention, and in terms of opportunity costs. And given that uh, a, our professional time is limited, at least for now, even if measured in decades, we definitely want to maximize the return on the investment that we are making in developing a new skill. But not all skills are equal. Some of them are more marketable. Some of them uh, are uh, harder uh, to acquire. They require a longer application, a deeper understanding, or maybe specific talents and attitudes. So there will be a natural ranking uh, of what the opportunities are of acquiring a new skill based on these criteria. One of the most important criteria is, however, how long am I going to be able to apply usefully that particular skill in a market constantly evolving where new technologies, new approaches, new attitudes, new requirements constantly pop up. The probability that rather than a particular skill being attractive in a broad market, uh, in my ability to generate value in that market, that particular skill being neutral or even a hindrance, when that probability 
reaches or goes below uh, 50%, I call that the half-life of the skill. So let's make a few examples. The probability that a soft skill would decline in its ability to generate value is very low. Empathy, my um, capacity to put myself in someone else's shoes and as a consequence, better understand their point of view and maybe better negotiate an outcome with them that optimizes not only my interests, but their interests and objectives as well, putting our relationship in a stronger foundation for future development. It is unlikely that improving our empathy is going to be in the future less valuable than many other things where we could invest our time and attention. The ability to find and hire, uh, manage and if needed, fire people, recognizing uh, in others uh, those uh, professional characteristics or human qualities that complement the existing team and fill gaps uh, in order to make everyone more effective uh, in reaching our goals. This is also a skill uh, that is very unlikely to decline in its value. So, the conclusion is that it is always worth investing and improving in soft skills at any age. Another example could be the ability to communicate your ideas, public speaking. Too many people are hindered in uh, their capacity to build uh, their uh, professional career or to give form to their ideas by poor communication abilities and a pretty widespread fear of public speaking. Now, on the other hand, uh, there are definitely extremely valuable technical skills that are worth acquiring. And these um, are almost always characterized by uh, waves of excitement that make them very attractive. And it is absolutely worth to consider how to combine a solid foundation of technical skills that have lasting power um, together with those that may require some deep analysis, but it may have a shorter half-life. Again, let me uh, give a few examples. One of the uh, greatest uh, waves of excitement uh, is around uh, cryptocurrencies, the blockchain, and the corresponding technical skills of uh, developing applications based on the blockchain, uh, smart contract development, and so on. The whole uh, philosophy of a decentralized and distributed application is very different from uh, the philosophy of a traditional uh, application. And as a consequence, a, a developer must acquire an ability to understand the logic of uh, the program and how uh, the uh, blockchain can support certain functions, but also how uh, others are much better handled, at least for now, by more traditional centralized um, structures. So, 
from an architectural point of view, it is uh, extremely valuable to understand the balance of the components of uh, a blockchain project. And uh, it belongs uh, to a technical skill uh, to be able to make decisions around this architecture that is likely to stay uh, because the um, compromises or uh, the decisions that need to be made uh, around which components to decentralize, which components to uh, put on uh, centralized systems instead, is going to change, but still the decision will need to be made and the ability to make those decisions will stay valuable. Which programming language, which particular framework, uh, which uh, approach needs to be used to implement uh, the uh, solution that has been designed and architected on um, a given operating system or a given layer one blockchain, a, a particular mobile phone target, well, that is much more contingent. Um, if uh, you developed uh, a few years ago a, a mobile application, it, well, uh, someone in the team or a client could ask, shouldn't we also have on top of iOS and Android also a Windows Mobile version? Well, uh, Windows Mobile didn't survive, so the ability to develop for Windows Mobile has also become obsolete and kind of useless. Today, um, there are new opportunities for sure. A another example is developing for um, interactive smart speakers and the conversational interfaces that uh, they represent or developing for the um, new metaverse uh, environments uh, where the interactivity uh, and the three-dimensional immersive uh, reality they create uh, pose a completely new set of challenges for both uh, those who architect uh, the solutions as well as uh, to developers of uh, the solutions. And familiarizing oneself with what are the tools and what are the approaches to be able and rapidly acquire the new skills needed, of course, is possible. We have to be uh, on guard uh, against uh, both requirements and claims that are close to impossible, if not truly impossible. This creates uh, uh, some posts that uh, you may have seen online where the creator of the framework says, well, evidently I wouldn't qualify because I only created this uh, framework uh, three years ago. It became very popular, but this job requires five years of uh, experience or more uh, with my own uh, framework. So uh, understanding um, and analyzing what is the likely um, life cycle uh, of these technical skills uh, enables a person to make um, very valuable judgments on the investment that a particular direction deserves. Here is another example. Machine learning uh, is exploding with beautiful applications supporting uh, creativity and creators, for example, in uh, its ability to generate images or generate text without any uh, technical uh, knowledge. Well, 
the technical knowledge of creating these platforms, such as GPT-3, DALI-2, uh, Midjourney, and uh, uh, many others, is of course tremendous. Uh, but here as well, it is possible to distinguish a particular uh, way of setting up the machine learning life cycle uh, in um, collecting the data, preparing the data, um, training uh, the algorithms on the data, uh, and then continuing uh, with the, the cycle, improving the results from a deep understanding of statistics and data science. While the approach on the surface will change, uh, the approach at the bottom uh, is likely to stay constant for a long time, possibly decades. So I hope that uh, alongside the other useful parameters uh, of prioritizing certain skills that you may decide to acquire, this concept of the half-life of skills is something that you also find valuable. Thank you.